Welcome back to the Delaware Way. Cycling really has become part of the fabric of Delaware, especially with our past governor who made it part of his initiative, wanted to be part of his legacy. And that makes our next guest very happy. James Wilson is the executive director of Bike Delaware. I would imagine Governor Markell is one of your heroes now. Yeah, uh, you know, we had called him the most bicycle friendly governor in America and uh, he was all in. Uh, it was a joy to work with him. What is Bike Delaware? So we are a nonprofit, a non-governmental organization. Our mission is to make cycling and, and walking safe, convenient and fun transportation options. And I'll just repeat that word transportation. Our, you know, most people think of bicycling as something you do on the weekend for recreation. That's not our mission. Our mission is transportation. You would argue it's an important public policy. Yeah, so I'll mention two things, two public policy issues that, that are, you know, I think everyone would acknowledge are really important and that intersect with, with our mission. One is public health, right? I mean, we, we have, you know, 40% of Delawareans are overweight or obese. You know, there are all these chronic diseases associated with that, you know, heart disease, stroke, many cancers. It's extremely urgent that people be able to live active lifestyles so that they can keep their weight under control and avoid all those diseases. Everybody wants to exercise more. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to exercise more and everybody says I don't have the time. And here is a way when you cycle that you can incorporate and believe me I don't do it but this, this is a way of incorporating exercise into your daily routine. Yeah you don't need to go to the gym and spend all that money which as you said is, is, is costly and I mean I don't have a gym membership. I. I don't like to exercise. It really doesn't do anything for me. I don't like to sweat and do all that kind of thing. But you just need a little bit of everyday physical activity to keep a lid on, on, on your weight. I mean, that's the way human beings used, we used to do things. We used to be a more active society. And then we all, you know, got cars and, and, and vi digital devices. You said there was two important po public policies. Health is the first one. Economic, Second one? economic development and jobs. So what, what, very few people understand is how expensive transportation is. Uh, we often tell people, you know, we ask people, what is this, you know, what is the second largest household expense? And people will usually say, well, housing is the first, but people will often say education or health care. It's not, it's transportation. Transportation is the second largest household expense. And that's because it costs about $9,000 every year to own, insure, maintain, and fuel a personal vehicle. Now, that's obviously a problem for, for, for some folks who are at the lower end of the income scale, but I want to flip it around, right? Every time you enable a household to form in your community where there's one, they own one less vehicle, that means they have $9,000 available that they can spend locally, right? And when, when you own a vehicle, all that, we don't make any cars in Delaware anymore. We don't drill for any oil. All of that money that we spend on transportation 90% of it is leaving our local economy. I don't think anybody's going to give up their car to bike, though. I, I don't think that's going to happen. However, if you use the car less, th that helps with congestion. It does help with economic development. I can see it also helps with the environment. Imagine you have a two-income household, you know, two, 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 two workers. If, you ha if, you're, if your kids are a, going to school a mile away, if your job is three miles away, if your shopping is nearby, and there's also good transit. We are trying to make it possible for people, for these households to have one car instead of two cars. And again, that's $9,000 on average every year. It's still a tough sell, but I... I, for, I, I for, for, for people at the upper end of the income scale, it's not going to happen, right? If you're making $100,000 every year, you're going to have your car, right? But imagine as you come down, imagine you're a student, Imagine you've just graduated from school. Imagine you're retired, right? And you, you, you don't need to even go to work every day. There are lots and lots of folks for whom it would be really economically advantageous for them personally to own one less car. It. And it we, would be great for their local community because then that money could be spent locally. We, we delve so much into public policy that we ran out of time. I, I would love you to come back because we need to talk about the recreation and the bike trails and, 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 and some of the exciting things that are happening in Delaware. Let's back. do it again. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. James Wilson is the executive director of Bike Delaware. That's Delaware Way for this week. You can go to metv2.com to replay segments from this show or from previous shows and leave your comments about what you've seen today on our Facebook page or you can reach me on Twitter at Delaware Way or at Larry Menti. We may read your thoughts on a future show. I'm Larry Menti. We'll see you again next week.